<clears throat> so uh, we'll run through a quick agenda for you all here. Um, we'll start off with a, a quick background and snippet of Dimension, where we come from, and the platforms that we offer today. And then I'll hand it over to the CAD Micro team with Sue to talk about their systems, the, the background of CAD Micro, uh, what they have available, and how those different machines work, and where they could be used within the industries. And then we'll get into some more of the high detail work. Uh, we'll talk about with the vapor fuse servicing in itself, the benefits that you would see coming out of it, why is it in green and industrial, and then we're going to focus on some key experiments that we tried to help promote some of those uh, the advantages that you might see coming off of the power fuse system. And then after that, we're going to talk about how we can apply those into the different industries, what applications make sense for these advantages. Um, and then last but not least, we'll talk about how you actually get started, whether if you have machines or don't have machines. And then we're going to bring in some of our experts uh, to help with some of the Q&A questions and we'll open up the floor to everyone who's attending. So without further ado, I'll start off here. Uh, so my name is Mike Shore. As Daniel mentioned, I'm the head of application consulting based out of North America for Dimension. Uh, my background is very heavy in manufacturing. I have around seven plus years in 3D printing. That's through across a couple different industries, mostly in consumer goods, but also in aerospace and defense and a little bit in automotive. Uh, my background from the manufacturing side, I actually grew up in the automotive industry, transition that, transition that all the way through for both subtractive and additive all the way up to where I am now, where I get to kind of tie everything together and help customers like you. Now I'm gonna hand it off to Sue to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Sue Chelaney and I take care of our customers, uh, CAD Micro Solutions customers, uh, mainly in Quebec and Atlantic Canada. I've been with CAD Micro Solutions for over three years as part of the additive manufacturing team. And um, I have a strong belief in an excellent customer experience. I work hard to make sure my customers get that. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. And now we'll pass off to the experts and we'll start with Alina. Hello, everyone. I'm Alina. I'm the head of R&D at Dimension. Well, after my PhD in chemistry, I started to work in 3D printing. And during my time here at Dimension, I was, among others, responsible to develop the vapor fuse surfacing process, about which we will also talk a lot about today. Excellent. Thank you, Elena. And I'll pass it back over to Cat Micro and Deep. Hi, everyone. Uh, Deep Singh here. I'm part of the leadership team at Cat Micro Solutions. I'm responsible for developing and, um, and growing our additive business. It's, a, it's a, one of the verticals that we focus here at Cat Micro Solutions. Uh, our company is 37 years old. Sue so will talk more about that. From an additive background, I've been in the space for about 10 years now, anywhere from global OEM product services implementation. Um, really, a lot of the work that I've done is around uh, customer return of investment um, and cost optimization. Um, I'm also part of some of the advisory boards here in Canada and nationwide where we're advocating for additive technology, both from market and labor perspective. So anything to do with additive, that's sort of uh, uh, really hard and near dear to my, my, my space. Excellent. Thank you so much, everyone, for the quick intros. And now that you've met all of us who are presenting to you today, uh, might as well introduce you to the Dimension Shaft. Um, so this is our team at Dimension. We're over 60 people strong, spread out globally here. So this is, uh, we have a, our headquarters is based outside of Munich, Germany. And we are just now opening our facility in Austin, Texas, which will serve as our North American headquarters. A little snippet of where we came from. Um, so we actually started off kind of learning just like many of you out there right now. So we, we started off with the simple of 3D printed smartphone cases. We learned really fast that this was not a reliable approach because we did the basics. We did pot dyeing, we did the simple stuff. And really quickly we learned that consumers were having really bad difficulties with uh, dye transferring onto their clothing or their hands, wherever else might be. So over a couple of years, our co-founders actually worked extremely hard and with the help of several different funding areas, we were able to launch our core of our systems, which is our DM60. Uh, DM60 is that full reliable deep dye coloring solution. Once that was out into the market, we we're able to get that reliable color. But over a couple of years in the industry, we started to realize that we needed to focus the attention elsewhere as well. Everything after the print needed to be reliable in order to guarantee color results. So that's when the full workflows introduced the PowerShot C and the PowerShot S. Uh, PowerShot C is our cleaning opportunity. PowerShot S is a mechanical surfacing finish. These kind of enabled a full workflow to help guarantee some results coming through. This way, the coloring approach at the very end always had a more repeatable process. 
After this, we started investing into the company. So we had another series of investing rounds to help develop uh, future developments, uh, continued expansion within the teams. And in 2018, moving into 2020, were huge years for us. Uh, we started off with our North American team growing exponentially here. We did launch a couple of very unique color lines that were, that were specific towards industries. So we launched the Automotive X line, which had UV resistance for automotive interior specifications. Then we looked at the neon colors for the consumer goods sector. The back end of the year, we launched our Power Fuse S, which is where we're gonna focus the attention on today. What's really unique here is the Power Fuse S really enabled a ton of different applications to come through. And then we kind of finished off the year, began this year with the launch of the MJF color line. So everyone who's on the webinar today, this would be extremely important for you as well, because that different color lines enables that gray material to have a different chance to, to get out into the fields of application. Continuing this year, we had a very successful year, even with everything that was happening. We did launch our full global platform network, the largest in the industry right now. We also fin finished off a full funding round of around $14 million, all of which is going to be pushed into the future developments in the company and help grow and expand. And last but not least, uh, the European Green Deal, Green Deal funding. So this is a, an extremely important uh, concept built up in the European Union with the European Innovation Council. And I'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. <clears throat> so on this slide here is just a snapshot of all the different platforms that we offer through Dimension. So left to right here, we have our cleaning system, which is our PowerShot C, uh, currently the fastest method and most reliable method in the industry for automatic depowdering. Second system in is the PowerShot S. This is a mechanical surfacing finish. So this is also the fastest approach in the entire industry right now for basic finishing. It still does leave a little bit of porosity to the part, but it completely levels out all those peaks and valleys. The chemical system, uh, PowerFuse S right in the big center there, that is what we're going to talk about today, of course. Um, that is our chemical smoothing system. And moving all the way to the right, the last step is our deep dye coloring solution. What that kind of looks like in a process flow here, um, we have three basic steps. There's always a cleaning step, a surfacing step, and then a coloring step. And they may alter a little bit in order based on uh, the application and the material you're using. But this is just kind of a general snapshot here. So we always start off with cleaning. So once we get the parts out and decake them, PowerShot C is where we start for cleaning. Then when we choose our options of different surfacing, whether we want a mechanical surface, we go with the PowerShot S, or if we're looking at truly sealed surface, we usually end up with a PowerFuse. Last up is the aesthetic side of it, and that's where the DM60 comes in to add that last touch of the final color. So taking this into an idea of um, the, the different technologies that you can actually apply these to in different materials, what does the DM60, what does the power fuse, what are all these different technologies, what are they actually good for? So we did focus and we start off the company on the powder bed side of the industry. And what we're looking at here in the MJF and HSS side is that we're able to target all the different materials from various different approaches, whether it was through just the cleaning or just the dyeing or now the power fuse, we're able to tackle all these different areas individually or combined if we need to. On the SLS side of things, we're able to open up the platform even more just because of that base color of the material is a little bit whiter, a little bit brighter. So that color platform had a larger repertoire to choose from. Through all the different developments that we've been doing over the past years now, uh, we did open up new industries as well. And this might be interesting for the few folks that did or are using other technologies, whether it's FDM or the resin-based systems like carbon, for instance. Um, the Power Fuse and the DM60 both enable these different platforms to be used with dimension systems. So if you had a Power Fuse in there, you need to justify costs, for instance, you could work that Power Fuse through any of your powder bed systems and even your FDM systems, which opens up new markets into the aerospace industry. And then from the DM60, it could be used across the entire platform, everything except for your FDM side of things. But the resin is another opportunity for the deep dye coloring solution. So that's a good background of where Dimension came from. So I'm actually gonna pass it off to Sue now to introduce herself and her team and what they're working on. Hi, uh, so I'll start a little bit about CAD Micro Solutions. So we've been around since the early 80s. Uh, we're headquartered in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. 
we started off as a software reseller focusing on the engineering and manufacturing space. And then several years ago, as the world headed towards Industry 4.0, we saw an opportunity to continue to add to our portfolio and to get closer to our customers in that same space by bringing on technology to uh, enable them to innovate and succeed in their own businesses. To do this, we brought on some of the leaders in additive manufacturing, metrology, 3D scanning, virtual and augmented reality, and post-processing. The services and solutions we provide really cover the whole product design life cycle. So we now have five offices across Canada, and we've done this to be closer to our customers for the best customer experience. We really appreciate our partnership with Dimension, particularly, particularly for our HP MultiJet Fusion customers across Canada. And I just wanted to mention, we do have Service Bureau customers in Canada using these new technologies, so please reach out to us to find out more. So can we go to the next slide? And I'll tell you a little bit about HP and MultiJet Fusion. So today we're here to talk about HP and their MultiJet Fusion uh, 3D printed parts. HP offers 3D printing solutions, which cover the prototyping and smaller production models, including color, all the way through to their volume production printers. To complement the producing of 3D printed parts, they've partnered with material suppliers for an open materials platform, with software suppliers for a more tailored solution which has specific applications, as well as post-processing solutions like the one we're here to talk about today. Let's get a bit into how MJF or MultiJet Fusion works so you can better understand how and why the post-processing the post-processing is so important. Sorry about that. Um, so HP uh, MultiJet Fusion is different from other powder-based technologies in many ways. One of the main differences and an advantage is the area-wide printing technique that's used. So in this slide, we're showing the basic three-step process for layer forma formation, which includes uh, the first frame, the material is spread over the build area. Then in the second frame, we see the area-wide print heads deposit fusing and detailing agents in one pass. Um, then in the third frame, we see the material is fused through an application of energy from the fusing lamps. During this process, the printer is constantly monitoring the temperature of the print zone, making minute adjustments to maintain optimal conditions for print success. Finally, the last uh, frame shows uh, you have a final sliced view of what the um, what it looks like. Next slide, please. So there's many places where the technology can be used. So uh, anywhere customization is key, unique, or a few pieces at a time. Uh, another application would be prototyping for rapid iterations, design validations, and training. Uh, smaller production runs, example would be tooling and fixturing. And then also for really complex design where traditionally you may need parts assembled, with MultiJet Fusion, they may be printed all together. Next slide, please. So about MultiJet uh, Fusion materials, there's a continuously growing range of materials that HP offers or has certified for their 3D printers. In addition to the four you see here, um, but I've chosen just these ones to display today because they are some of the most common materials that we see HP customers using. For example, PA12 is probably the most common one used because of its high recyclability, up to 80%. Our customers also tend to choose the PA12 because of strength, durability, cost. It, it is biocompatible. It has fluid tightness and a lot more qualities. And actually, PA12 is the material used to print PPE face shields. Uh, TPU is another material uh, which is flexible, which is being used for many different applications such as helmets, engine parts, headrests, and more. While it has a high shore value, depending on which TPU we're talking about, example, BASF or Lubrizol, the flexible characteristics can also be achieved through design and infill. So we're going to ask now why vapor fuse surfacing? Can you go to the next slide, please? So vapor fuse surfacing allows us to retain the part properties that make HP MJF technology so desirable. Parts are watertight and airtight even after surfacing, which means they can hold fluid or pressurized air, such as pneumatic grippers. Uh, 
Many of our HP customers are excited about the applications that elastomers like TPU enable. So being able to achieve the surface finish you'd like while maintaining the part properties you require is essential. Aesthetics are important for end use parts, for example, our customers in the automotive industry. Food handling friendly as well. By that I mean, as an example, end of arm tooling would make a great application, but not a chocolate mold. So I'll hand it over now to Michael, who will explain in detail the process. Thanks, Michael. Excellent. Thank you, Sue. I appreciate the background and insight to CAD Micro, your team, and a little bit into the HP process. So as we just talked about um, why Vaporfuse surfacing, so let's get into the bit background of what that even is, what Vaporfuse is, what are the benefits, why is it green, what is industrial? <clears throat> So this is actually a really cool snapshot here, looking right down the throat of the machine. Uh, this is our automatic loading system. So these parts are already set up on the bin, but as you can see, that lid is closed. So these parts are then positioned in front of the chamber, ready to be drawn into the chamber. And now we'll see a quick animation to understand what that actually means. So as you see, that basket fully loaded with parts aligns itself automatically in front of the chamber, is drawn all the way into that chamber, a process door closes, and that's when the magic starts to happen. The vapor is introduced into the chamber. Everything starts going on here the, at the right temperature, the right pressure, everything at the right exact parameter setting. What we're seeing here is the vapor is actually reacting with that part, allowing those peaks and valleys to kind of reduce themselves and then get that completely sealed surface. That's what we're looking for. And this is applicable to any of your main technologies as we talked about before, um, whether it's an SLS technology, MJF technology, whichever it might be. You can always take that technology once it's after the process, run it right through the DM60 and create that final step of the process here. As you can see with the MGF side, you can still dye it afterwards to get a really true deep vibrant black. So that's an understanding of the process. Again, it's just a quick animation to show you what's happening inside that chamber in a very simplistic way. So let's look at what it means moving forward. Everything we always do is always about pushing to that next level, industrialization, sustainability, all these big keywords, what do they really mean? Well, to be true to it, industrialization is wonderful, but if it does not work hand in hand with sustainability, it will not go anywhere, it will not succeed. So that's where the power fuse really comes into play because it embodies both of those key principles, allowing for full sustainability, better cost per part margins, everything's all wrapped around that future of industrialization, but keeping economic stability in mind. So as we look into the industry 4.0 and that future of the processing, um, key things are always needed. And that's where the, the power fuse comes into play. With the fully automatic loading concept, you could run completely lights out 24 seven. That means a technician could have parts loaded on different baskets already set up on the chamber, assign a specific program to those baskets, push go, and the system will automatically align those as we saw in the video, run the process, draw it out and then move it to the side and set the next one up ready to go. No one is involved on that process. No technician needs to be there hands on. The unbeatable cost per part margins at full, capa full capacity is exactly that, allowing the capability of the technician to be doing something else, allowing the power fuse to be running completely autonomously. It is always monitored. There is a, a, a standard ethernet cable going in the back, allowing, allowing full connectivity, even if it's connectivity into your internal systems or understanding how you can push those into your digital planning systems. As we see on the left-hand side too, these were actually examples from Formnex last year uh, that Siemens has done for us, showing how the different dimension system, especially power fuse, could be implemented into a standard processing step. We do have all standard validated programs for your common materials out there, and we're continuing to develop and push those sets as new materials continue to be introduced, especially like as Sue had shown before, those four main materials, there's countless others always being worked on, and we're very much in depth with all of those materials as they come through. So now we looked past the industrial 4.0. So let's look at the, uh, the eco side of this. If we're gonna look at industrialization and economic stability, we always have to think about what is the other side of the coin here? And that's where the environment comes into play. So we ended up choosing an eco-friendly solvent, which is already approved for food packaging by the EU. We also, it's very important to understand here, this is a solvent that's not listed on the CMR list. The CMR is basically carcinogenic, mutagenic, and reprotoxic solvents. 
This is extremely important to understand because a lot of industries out there immediately have these chemicals that are on this list automatically blacklisted. And this is a continuously growing list based on volumes in the industries and the, and the countries that you might be within. So if you are using a system that has a solvent that happens to be on this list, it may be totally fine, but eventually if it ever hits that list, all of a sudden you're forced to use a different solvent um, and it's completely mandated. So we chose a specific solvent that's already seen in various industries. We already can find it in, in countless cosmetics and other industries throughout the world. So we'll be safe on that side of the coin. What's really important to understand within the power fuse is it's a completely true closed loop, which means the solvent is integrated into a full recovery system, allowing for no waste whatsoever. That means no extra canisters, no refilling, nothing of the sort. It's all done internally in the system. No technician will ever touch the, the chambers, the canisters, or the solvent itself, allowing that for that full contact-free process. The only contact is when you're loading parts onto the baskets or unloading them off the baskets. And that's after they're already processed, completely safe to touch. And what's also key here is because everything's fully interlooped within the system, it can be operated at any facility without any kind of infrastructure changes, no external uh, piping to the atmosphere, anything of the sort there. Power fuse is one unit as it is standalone. So we take all these things and we combine them together. And this is where we're gonna talk about the Green Deal from the European Union. This is an incredibly important push here uh, from Europe. This is the push to become the first climate neutral continent by 2050. Really exciting drive here, really exciting to continue to push this and adopt this into their culture. Dimension sub completely supports this and was fortunate enough to be selected as one of the few companies to be part of this initiative and drive it forward. And it's all because of the power fuse and the, what it can do behind its scenes and how it looks to push it through to industrialization as we, as we talked about before keeping economic stability and the environmental conditions all in mind there. So we're really excited about what this means for the company and for Europe itself. So we look past just the, the basics of understanding industrial uh, industry 4.0, the economic stability. We need to actually do something to the parts to make it valuable for each industry, make someone actually really want to buy the system and invest their time and money into the process. So we have to look beyond just aesthetics, just beyond the visual look of what a smooth part might look like. What are we changing mechanically to the part to actually validate the system? So what we're gonna look here is we're gonna focus on eight different tests that we did. Um, what I wanted to point out real quick too is that these tests are not ISO norm tests, they're not standardized testing. These are basic tests to help visualize and conceptualize what is happening to the part in a very easy way to understand instead of looking at the deep numbers and various testing measures. Um, we just want to help influence different ideas to come through. So we're going to start this off looking at one of the biggest key concepts here, and that's a, the sealed surface, both inside and outside of the part. Now, all the parts that we're going to talk about are all printed in standard settings and the HP, uh, HP MJF printers. They're all using the standard HP PA12 and, as I mentioned, all standard processing and layer lines and layer thicknesses. On the left-hand side for all of these tests, we're gonna show a part that's not vapor fused surface. The only difference, some of them might have some deep dye coloring to help visualize and see what's happening here. For this side here on the right-hand side, the right part is vapor fused surface finished. So that's smooth sealed surface and deep dye coloring to help visually see what's going on. So it's a standard S-Bend tube hollowed out. As you can see immediately, that right side of the tube is completely sealed. We just ran water through the tube to help see what's gonna happen here. As you can see, after the water is just simply passed through the tube, what we're looking at is the water is getting trapped in all those different pores in this non-sealed part. And on the right-hand side, it just looks like a standard rubber tube with water just sealing right through it. And what that actually means is that we're reducing the RA values over 80%. So we're leveling all those peaks and valleys, creating that completely sealed area, allowing for no water to be caught in those pores. So looking again, the key concept here is it's a completely sealed surface in and out. The inside is a really key feature here. As you saw with that long S tube, really tough feature to smooth in any other mechanical fashion or any other dip method, for instance. There's no way to control the smoothness of the inside of that tube. So vapor smoothing is the only true method there and the power fuse is just so uh, naturally equipped to be able to smooth the entirety of that inner channel. Reducing those RA values more than 80% allowing for increased water and airflow. So moving into a next step here, we actually just looked at a basic test that's done 
numerous times throughout the industry and in multiple uh, pathways, a lot of service bureaus do this. It's just basic painting. So we took a standard, again, the standard two parts, uh, both identical print methods, all pH 12 again. The left-hand side is no surface finishing. The right-hand side is just the smoothing from the vapor fuse finish. A single layer of paint, then a second layer of paint, and we can immediately see a huge difference here. On the right-hand side with that sealed surface, we've closed all those pores off, allowing for that paint to evenly distribute across the whole part, completely sealing it, looking a beautiful part. On the left-hand side, because it's still so porous, there's so many different varying uh, heights and depths in those valleys, the paint really doesn't know where it's going yet, so it hasn't filled in. So we continue to apply layers to that left side. As you can see, we're already up to five layers of paint. Now, finally, on the sixth layer of paint is where we start to see a visual cue to equal that of the second layer from the vapor fuse finish. So what that means in a simple way is just that it, it's improving the basic uh, productive productivity of spray painting. And again, there are different methods that can be done, of course, to increase the, the productivity of spray painting. And that might be sanding the part, priming the part, or epoxy dipping. All these things take time, material, and they cost the money, let alone the fact if you have unique features or in-depth uh, textures on the part, sanding it will eliminate all those features. So you can never paint over it if you had to. The vapor fuse surface doesn't destroy any of those features. It continuously applies the perfect even seal across the whole part, allowing for that paint to apply equally again throughout the whole part. And as we saw there, completely reduce that time and material all the way down to a third of the time and cost potentially. So the third step here, we looked at improving air tightness on the part. So we took a hollow sphere. Uh, we had one channel in and we threw an air tube in there at a, a constant pressure of four bar. These wall thicknesses on these two parts are 0.45 millimeters. So as you can see on the left-hand side, air is escaping that part. What that means is it's not totally sealed, allowing for the porosity to allow for that air to escape. Now this may be a simple case for air escaping, it might be water coming in, any of these different scenarios. We're on the vapor fuse surface, completely sealed that part. As you can see, the air has nowhere to go. So it's totally sealed off. <clears throat> what we do wanna talk about as well, is we increase that wall thickness, kind of represent what might take place in the future. The MJF capability of going a little bit thicker in your wall thicknesses does allow to seal the part a little bit more, but if your design didn't start with a thick wall, then you're sacrificing design just to reach a mechanical capability. So the vapor fuse, what we're looking at here, it enables new designs to take place. It enables your traditional designs to take place, or it even enables just the improvement of a 0.45 millimeter or a 0.5 millimeter wall thickness to be truly sealed off. And what's really key to think about too, is we think about adding material what happens there? We add material, we add cost, we add time. So the power fuse system eliminates those extra expenses that might come out of printing in just a thick wall just to enable a mechanical feature. Next, we're gonna move into the reduction of friction. <clears throat> so we took a standard cube here and we again, uh, we deep dye color both just to help visually see what the parts look like. And we smoothed the part on the right and we left the part on the left completely raw otherwise. We took those two plates or two parts and we put them directly onto the identical plate. Then we simply lifted the plate until that part gained enough momentum to start sliding. What we see here is that the smooth part started to move immediately around 15 degrees. We're on the left hand side, the, the beginning area of movement happened over 23 degrees of angle. What that means is we reduce the friction of that part. We reduced it by over 33%. That is a huge number to think about in the industry. And what that really means looking under the microscope here is on the left-hand side, you still see all those porosity, the high peaks and valleys from the left-hand side, totally smooth, allowing for that friction to get that part to move immediately. So again, it's all about that smooth surface, reducing friction over 33%, we can think about different applications here, for instance, uh, think about bike seats or different things that you don't want friction, you don't want texture, you want that contact of skin or bike shorts, for instance, to continuously move along the part. This is really key where that reduction of friction is important. So now we're gonna talk about stability, improving the actual uh, basic features of the part itself or the material. 
So we took a standard design plate here. Um, these are just a basic plate with multiple pins sticking up, both of which were placed inside of a vise at the exact same location, the same exact angle. The only difference is, of course, a smooth finish versus a non-smooth finish. Then we took a solid steel bar and we simply slid it across the top, forcing those bars, forcing those beams to move, agitate, break, whatever might happen here. We ran it back and forth just to kind of get them a little bit more agitation to those beams. And what we're looking for here is just a simple visual to understand, are they breaking, are they not? And immediately you see on the left-hand side that the unsmooth part, 14 pins broke, where on the smooth part, zero pins broke. And what that actually means is that we improve the flexibility of the material of the part itself, the design. So we are reducing embrittlement of the part, improving the overall capability and stability of the part. So think about the different designs that might come in play that uh, previously you might have had to change your design, create a, a fillet or an extra beam, a support beam somewhere, where now smoothing it could eliminate all those extra design features. Again, eliminating cost, eliminating material. All we're doing is just smoothing the part afterwards. So now we're gonna talk about something that's very important, especially in today's times is bacteria protection. So we took a basic uh, Petri, dish, Petri dish with an environmental condition ideal for bacteria growth, as you can see in the, uh, the slide here. And we took a standard tensile bar, one of which was unsmooth and one that was went through our power fuse surfacing. We did a contact test here. So this is similar to a high five, for instance, or a quick touch on a door handle and walk away. So it's immediate quick touch, allowing the bacteria to start to grow. So we placed that plate, uh, we placed the part quick slap against the, the, the environmental condition here in the Petri dish. And what we're looking for is bacteria growth. So immediately over several hours of testing here, 32 hours, we can start to see some great bacteria, or not great, but a lot of bacteria growth beginning to happen on the part that was not smooth. On the right-hand side, still nothing's happening there. The only thing that you're seeing visually is a little bit of condensation of water on that right-hand side, not to differ from what's happening on the left-hand side, immediately a ton of bacteria starting to grow. So over 40 hours, you're seeing, again, that bacteria is really inhibiting on that surface. We're on the left, on the right-hand side, there's still nothing happening there. So what you're thinking, what you should think about, what you want to move forward and where this could be applied is think about uh, door handles, the, the, the standard clip that we saw everyone print in the past few months of the arm uh, door handle uh, release that part could be smooth, allowing for a quick wipe off to eliminate the bacteria growth on that part. Medical uh, operating rooms or any kind of medical appliance that needs to be cleaned immediately after any use. These are areas where the power fuse surface and finish can enable printed parts to actually be used now in these areas of the industry because they can be wiped off and disinfected without concern. There's no pores for that bacteria to start growing within. And again, transitioning this to a little bit more understanding washable surfaces, looking again at the food and medical industry. We took a standard Petri dish style plate here. One part was smooth, one part was not. And then we applied basic mustard to the part and we tried to clean it off. What we're looking at here is how much of that mustard retained on the plate versus the power fuse finish, how clean could we actually get it? Looking under a microscope, you can see immediately all the residue left on that part on the left-hand side that had no finish whatsoever. Or on the right-hand side, because of that totally sealed surface, everything was wiped off immediately. So again, as we look at things like the medical industry where those parts need to be cleaned immediately, the power fuse finish enables all those printed components to now be used truly in that field. Because we did choose a solvent that is certified for food contact according to that regulation, um, now we can start thinking about different food applications and continue down that path in the industry as well. So we took that concept of washable surfaces, but we applied it to more aggressive solvents. What does it happen? What happens to the part with something like oil or chemicals that are applied onto that part? So we took a standard funnel here again, printed the same ways again. Part on the left hand side, as always, no finish, just deep dye coloring on the right hand side vapor fuse finish and deep dye coloring. We applied oil to that part and then we actually sprayed on an oil remover. So this is a harsh chemical basically allowing to lift up that oil and clean that part off. So it's attacking the surface. After a certain amount of time we're allowed to wipe that part off and immediately you see a huge visual difference. 
So then we ended up just rinsing it, following the directions accordingly. And after 15 minutes after rinsing it, now this is where that part should be totally done. You can see on the left-hand side that all that material that's been removed from that part because of that harsh chemical. On the right-hand side, because that's totally sealed surface, all that oil is moved, removed and the chemical that was used to remove that solvent or remove that oil did nothing to that surface. So what's really cool to see here is not only is it a sealed surface that allows you to completely wipe off things, but now you can actually apply chemicals for those more aggressive or, or low viscosity type solvents that need something to lift it off. It's not gonna harm that part that's been printed. So you don't have to think about every time I use this funnel, I need to print a new one. No, nope. now we can actually reuse parts over again. There's no residues left on side of it. So please stay tuned because we are gonna continually release a lot more information and video content on all of our social media platforms. Uh, we're going to show off different technologies that we use in these testing. So, of course, everything we're doing here is focused around NJF. Um, we are doing a couple other webinars later this month that are used are focused around SLS technology as well. And then we have another one for our APAC region uh, that's going to actually focus on both technologies. As we stated before, all those tests were very basic testing methods. Um, so. If you wanna read more about actual unique testing methods, please do look at our white paper, which goes really in depth on the ISO standard norms and tests for wettability tests, or even looking at the reduction of RA values. So where do we apply this into the industries? Whether it's any of your pillars that we're looking at here, industrial, automotive, consumer, whatever it might be, how do we apply the surface into that industry? So looking at the industrial area, we look at things like air and liquid pipes, transport pipes, essentially looking at how a smooth surface in and out can enable a new application to be used. Things like the automotive interiors, for instance, um, where it might be a class A or class B part, uh, totally sealing off that part, allowing for contact or easy, easy wipe off surfaces, or even reducing the amount of friction on part, whether it's a, a doorknob, a shifter knob, paddle shifters, for instance, all of these different things that you wanna be sealed to protect the surface of a printed part really unique that the power fuse could enable these printed or these applications to now be printed. In the consumer sector, looking at the increased stability of the part or increased flexibility of the part is a really cool feature when we look at things like eyeglasses, which are fragile because of thin structures, or even moving into fields of uh, TPUs and your elastomerics and things like footwear, increasing that uh, elastomeric strength of the part, allowing to push beyond the nature of the material itself. In the medical world, again, as we talked about with that door handle opener, or the door handle on the top right side of the screen here, because of that totally sealed surface, allowing for the, a different environment so bacteria is not growing nearly as fast, it can immediately be wiped off and allowing for a safe part to actually be used in different operating rooms, procedure rooms, whatever it might be. Um, really a unique feature just from the power fuse enables, again, printing components now can be used in medical applications. Power fuse, as we talked about, uh, enabling aerospace industry through parts like Altem, for instance, really highly used in, air, in the aerospace industry. But MJF parts are also really vastly growing. When you look at tray tables, armrests, all these different things that can potentially be printed, eliminating shelf space, we need to be able to seal those so that uh, a flight attendant can actually wipe or clean the, a, a tray table after use every time. So that vapor fuse finish allows for these different cleanable surfaces to now be applied. Food and, beverage industry, food and beverage industry, as Sue had mentioned before, things like robotics and grippers. Um, think about a Venturi, for instance, as a part of your robotic arm. It's a specialized channel inside. The air needs to be able to flow through. So if it's a smooth part, that air actually flows, allowing that design to work properly. So thinking in all these different methods of how you can really use the application, um, smooth surface enables a true design to be used in the industry because it, it basically replicates a, a traditional mold, uh, but now you can actually use inner channels, things that weren't able to be done in traditional mold inner tooling. So now we understand a lot about the backgrounds of all our companies, the different testing, the results, how it might benefit and different fields of application. So how do we actually get started? Uh, this is where you can talk directly to myself or to Sue with CAD Micro. As Sue had mentioned, there are several different companies within Canada already with all these platforms installed. So you can be running benchmarks through those guys 
or through CAD Micro and Sue herself, and even through myself at Dimension. Um, we could run those free benchmarkings. We'll always send a report out completely showing what was done to the part um, so you can understand the full process the whole way through and we'll work with you the whole point of the time. Those industry partners are all throughout the globe here. So 46 strong alliances in over 19 different countries. As we look into the Canada region, we have several up there that have the full workflow. And even in the US, we have another countless companies all there with full workflows, full setups, ready to go with many technologies in house. As always, uh, you can always reach out to myself or Sue directly to kind of gain some more information and push these boundaries a little bit more. And we're always happy to work with you.